-hmm. so we go to the left, we go to the various factions on the right that are just affected, and we are trying to pick up some of these other exotic communities. Some of the, you know, Arizona, Nevada, we got a lot of these various exotic communities here. And mm -hmm. uh, we like them because a lot of them are ideologically galvanized, I like to say. So if you're in the UFO disclosure community, which is million strong, as you know full well in Nevada, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they don't care if the media calls them crazy, right? The media has always been calling them crazy. Um, if you're part of the like hippie, spiritual, health, wellness, yoga, crystals, tarot cards, that sort of flavor of crowd, same thing. Uh, they are very countercultural and they are very unfazed by any kind of hate coming their way from the mainstream media. Uh, the crypto people, right? They're very decentralization minded, most of them. And they're, they've been used to the mainstream media calling what they're doing stupid and fake for a long time. Um, so naturopathic and holistic medicine um, is another one. Um, gamers, uh, the sovereign, right? The, the sovereign and state national crowd, which mm -hmm. is very conducive to this, you know, United States corporation, bankruptcy, that kind of stuff. Um, and we like the and, and apparently, by the way, there uh, I'm hearing rumors that they're up to 15 million strong now, which is like close to five percent of the population. I mean, that that whole state national thing is uh, blowing up like crazy. And it's funny because they all have the peace flag behind them, uh, which we should we should talk about the significance of that, yep. like what, what that, that all means and stuff. That should be our new flag right there. Right. Our yeah. current flag. Again, I respect everyone who served or gave their life in service to our country. But I think where we get a little off the rails on the right sometimes is we get too focused on the symbol, right? The people didn't die for that flag. The people died for this country and for the people in this country and for the rights mm -hmm. that this country represents. It wasn't necessarily just about the symbol. It was about the country. Um, the other thing is that flag is the East India Company flag, right? We just, it was the East India Company flag just got changed a little bit. And that is... In my humble estimation, kind of a wink at us of like, you're not actually free. You're still kind of like this corporation owned by the crown. Um, so yeah. is, is I, it, isn't it also a wartime flag? Like that's a flag yeah, that's absolutely. signify that we're in war, basically. Whereas this is a peace flag. I mean, isn't it that you care if you carry that where you have that flag outside your house, theoretically, uh, you're letting the law know that we're in wartime and hence uh essentially soldiers could come into your home basically and take it over more or less right according to the law um yeah i think i think back in the day that was the thing i don't know if that's the law specifically anymore but um i do know like the gold fringe and stuff that's like an indication of the admiralty law right so uh we just need a new brand a new symbol that represents our new country we want to make america quantum instead of keeping america medieval and uh so we're trying to take the steps to do that. And and I'm telling you guys, if we go collect these groups, if we collect those lefties I talked about, we collect the disaffected elements of the right, right? The traditionally Trump people, or maybe, you know, the people that were the make America great again. Mm -hmm. uh, we collect some of these exotic other groups. That right there is the 75% we need to actually overthrow mm -hmm. this government. To My question is happen. My question there is, though, like uh, when we we're talking about the whole like thing of, of like the left and the right agreeing on a lot of topics, but the fact that we can't agree on Trump, I just don't see many other people that uh, candidates that would be a wrecking ball and would go in there and dismantle the FBI. I literally haven't heard anybody else talk about that other than Donald Trump. Yeah, and he just started talking about that lately. That was another one of my criticisms. So so during the 2016 election, I was part of uh, the WikiLeaks task force, such a giant group of Anons, as they say. And we were cutting up these WikiLeaks emails and using these uh, robots from this website called Fiverr, where you could just buy, mm -hmm. you know, a thousand retweets, a thousand likes, whatever, for like five bucks for some, from click farms in Eastern Europe and from India and cheap places. And we could essentially go around and... Uh, as, as we know, based on how the elections have been going the last few cycles, for the national election, you can rig the national election by just rigging six counties and six states. So we yeah. were targeting those specific counties, and we were targeting key demographics in those counties. So like, say, black people in Milwaukee, right? And we would go find the trending hashtags, because the Twitter algorithm at the time was much more natural, meaning whoever got the most likes or retweets would show up at the top of each hashtag. And we would go get not just the political ones, but the pop culture ones, the uh, sports ones, all the ones that were really popular at the time. 
stack those in these tweets with these really extremely racist things that Hillary Clinton said in her emails and blast that out there, right? Mm -hmm. So just get that all ranked at the top. And a lot of people, they're forgetting that Donald Trump in 2016 didn't win because he was so popular with everyone, right? A lot of Republicans didn't like him. He got less total votes than Mitt Romney, who lost to Obama. The reason that yeah. he was able to win was because like 20 million lefties who they weren't expecting didn't show up because they were like, oh, yuck. And Donald Trump mm -hmm. at the time, the way he was talking, the way he was posturing was very anti-Bush, very anti-establishment, anti-wars, right? So they felt like, you know, I don't like this guy, but, you know, between this, between El Chapo and Orange Kanye, maybe I'll I'll let Orange Kanye have a, have a try. Um, yeah. So we, like, at the time, uh, we were putting cheeky hashtags, extra ones, on our post that were just said hashtag not a Russian agent. Because we could see in Hillary Clinton's emails that, hey, your lawyers have identified this deal you did with Uranium One, where you sold 20% of the United States uranium supply to Russia as your biggest vulnerability. So what did they do? They made a plan. All right, we're going to put this Russia thing onto Trump. And they were mm -hmm. lining that up in advance in their emails. And Donald Trump had that on day one. On day wow. one, he had all the ammo he needed to unlock this Russiagate thing. And mm -hmm. for some strange reason, he did not, right? He mm -hmm. did not pardon WikiLeaks or he, did, he didn't even bring him up again, really, right? So, so that's where I was, I was thinking, um, you know, if you got that Twitter 80 million followers strong and they're coming after you with this BS, I would have told the FBI, listen, you will cut the shit immediately or I will just start dropping WikiLeaks every day until you do. And I will start declassifying things every single day until you do. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not sure what the deal was there. I think um, he put Pompeo in as the CIA director, I think because Pompeo, ironically enough, was one of the only people going hard in the paint for WikiLeaks in the first place. So I don't know mm -hmm. if Pompeo was just posturing like that to try to trick Trump and get in there um, or if he got flipped after the fact. But it was weird because Pompeo went from like vigorously promoting WikiLeaks during the election to vigorously trying to kill Julian Assange after the election. Yeah. Um, so, but that's the kind of thing, like, I, I agree with you. I don't see anybody more so than Donald Trump that's willing to take the establishment to task. Uh, I see people like Ron DeSantis, and I think it's good that he avoided these COVID lockdown nonsense and some of the other state level things. But that was that's a West Point guy. That's the Gitmo lawyer, yeah. right? He was mm -hmm, the guy mm -hmm. going and creating the pretext for them to torture people at Gitmo. So is he really going to be the guy that's going to take the deep state to task as hard as possible? I don't know. I don't, um, I, don't th I don't think so. I mean, just watching his actions in Florida, whenever it comes to challenging the bar's power, which there's been a lot of challenges in Florida, by the way, that's actually gone through the state legislature there. Uh, he vetoes those kind of bills. So he seems, in my opinion, to be an agent of the bar. That's not going to really change much there. Definitely not the stuff you're talking about. Yeah. So it's it, we're in a tough spot, right? Because that was supposed to be Donnie Boy's job. And he really kind of, uh, for lack of a better term, he kind of got cucked in a lot of ways. So, um, you know, if if he figures it out if he if he's down to ride then um you know maybe we'll give him another look but uh, i you know i'm going to see what the landscape is at the time because i agree with you i don't see anybody out there that's willing to go harder after the establishment than donald trump and hopefully after all of this nonsense after all of these bs investigations after all of this hell that they've put him through maybe he would be willing to finally take it to the fbi for once um no. but we'll see we shall yeah. see and I think in the meantime, we got to stop relying on people to come save us in the government, right? Because even if, as we saw Trump, we, you know, you get in there, it's a frozen steering wheel, right? You're mm -hmm. only so powerful. And if the ways you exercise your power, right, the thing that makes the president powerful is he controls the federal law enforcement, theoretically, controls federal law enforcement, controls the military, controls the intelligence services. Again, theoretically, but if if your mechanisms of exercising power just give you the finger and do whatever they want what are you going to do right are you yeah, really the most yeah. powerful person in the world or are you just driving with yeah. the frozen i mean there, was, there, there there was reports today about how nuclear codes were being hidden uh conversations were being hidden from trump which is i mean it sounds absolutely treasonous but they were doing the, this this guy and uh, there did, you know, there doesn't seem to be any repercussions for really disre disrespecting the office of the presidency, you know?
It's it's outrageous what they get away with, especially in the military, right? The Pentagon just admitted again that, and this is what they'll admit publicly. So the the real number is probably ten times bigger. They're like, oh well, mm -hmm. we we can't find two trillion dollars. Sorry, and they just kind of shrug, it. <laughs> and it's like, so what? So and the Republicans in Congress, this is how weak they are. They were going to pass a thing that said, if you do this again, if you can't account for your money again in this ridiculous of a way, then you will have to give back 1% of your budget next year. Right? So oh. it's like, oh, man, don't do that. Right? Um, not a very huge threat. And not even that, not even that could get passed because the Republicans are so weak need when it comes to the military. Um, and again, the, the rank and file soldiers, like we respect their service. We appreciate them a whole lot. We would be in a, not a good place if we didn't have them. But these generals and these admirals, these are no longer soldiers. These are politicians. There is no mm -hmm. rank advancement up to admiral. There is no rank advancement up to general. You have to go get appointed and approved politically to make that happen. So none of these guys are soldiers anymore. They turn into politicians. And they do this insanely corrupt stuff. What other kind of organization could you just say, oh, you know, $2 trillion of your money is missing, investors. Whoops. Wow. Like, guess yeah. we'll get them next time. That's insane, right? And guess what? Right after it came out that $2 trillion of their money was missing, what did they do? They gave them another $50 billion in a raised budget. It's like, didn't we just end the war in Afghanistan? Right? Shouldn't wow. this theoretically be cheaper for us now? Where do you, where do you think that two trillion went though? Where do you? I mean, it had to go somewhere. Where you were? Waste, where did, like, fraud, UFO abuse, projects? corruption, graft, black projects. The the works, black projects, right? Yeah. Think yeah. about two trillion is way way like is enough to get everybody a, a piece, right? Mm. And what other organization would we let just continually poke us in the eye, continually steal our money, continually waste our resources and our lives overseas, and just mm -hmm. keep getting away with it? And this is the um, this is one of the things that I agree, like in theory, with some of these lefties on. Right? They're saying, "Oh, well, we wanted free college," and they said that would cost fifty billion dollars a year. And you're like, "Oh, no, absolutely not. That's way too expensive." But then mm -hmm. we can go give fifty billion extra dollars every single year to the military. Every single year, they get that much more. Yeah. Right. Um, we spend, yeah. you know, as much as the next ten countries combined on our military. We've given enough money to Ukraine this year. We've like almost twice what Russia spends on its whole military budget in a year. We have given mm -hmm. to Ukraine in the last like eight months. So it is absolutely preposterous. And I think this is one of the side, like, like I, I come from the right. I'm, I uh, grew up in the right. I just ran a Republican campaign, right? So, you know, mm -hmm. these are my people. But to my people, I say, we have to get over this reflexive reverence for military and law enforcement, right? We got to call balls and strikes. And it doesn't mean we don't support the rank and file people on the ground. It means like, dude, if these people that run the most powerful organizations in the world keep thumbing their nose at us, keep poking us in the eye, keep wasting our money, keep keep getting a bunch of people killed, we can't just reflexively, like every single time, just support that anymore. We got to get our heads out of our asses and we got to call these guys out. And I think... You know, for for this Biden situation, that's actually probably going to help us get that done, right? Because you see this, uh, they're celebrating the first tranny general over there. They they made their military mascot dog like that BDSM costume. They're just mm -hmm. clowning themselves in a lot of ways now. So hopefully yeah. this will be a perfect opportunity it's for them to see yeah. when you disrespect those generals and when you tell them to cut the shit and when you say you're a bunch of crooks, that's not disrespecting the rank and file of the military, right? There, there mm -hmm. is no un, underneath them. There is no room for disobedience, right? They don't get a choice for whether they obey or not, right? So we're mm -hmm. not blaming all the good people in the military. We're blaming these corrupt pieces of shit who run the military and these the corrupt politicians. Pieces of shit. Yes, the po the political generals and that yes, sort of thing. absolutely. Yeah. And and if we could get that under control, we would have so much more money to run our country, like so much more money to actually fix infrastructure, to actually make things work mm -hmm. again. That's one of our slogans here: make things work again. Yeah. Um, and we think that like part of our plan here is we don't want to ever allow them to get in this position in the future. And I think the way we do that is we don't build our government around bureaucrats. We build it around software, right? Software mm. that shows, you know, QuickBooks can do it. So can our government. It should be mostly a software thing with people helping facilitate instead of just a giant bureaucratic mess 
that you know sometimes they use software here and there but really they aren't using the software well because they can't tell where two trillion dollars is right and that's not no. just the case in the military that's the case across the board and yeah. that's largely the reason why they want to introduce this uh government controlled nightmare fed coin to us where they can surveil it or turn it off right they're like mm -hmm. oh you know we can never we just can't track our stuff so we have to use the surveillance coin it's like no we need to build our government on software. We could provide yeah. three times the services like for a quarter of the you're price. You're talking about blockchain? You're talking about blockchain to keep a track of pretty much all transactions within government? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it could be built on the blockchain. It'd be nice if it was decentralized so it's unhackable. Mm -hmm. um, like so that decentralized autonomous organization style, like DAOs. I don't know if you've seen that, where it's just mm -hmm. it's a set process that runs no matter what. You can't just go in and change it willy-nilly. You have to have the consensus among the group to make any changes. Um, and so I think that would keep help us stop getting hijacked. And I think that would help us track our money in a reasonable way. And I think we could then spend our money on reasonable things instead of this gigantic mess of bureaucracy. And mm -hmm. a lot of a lot of people don't understand, like the rich, the richest people, the, the super oligarchs of the world, they don't care that it's a giant mess. They actually like that, right? Because they could bribe mm -hmm. and lobby their way to the front of the line. And everybody else who's trying to compete with them, all the other up and comers, get just mm -hmm. clogged up in this gigantic mess. So that's that's one of the uh, big we're big proponents of a software based government, and that is the reason why. Then and you and you also there's two other things that stood out. Tell me if I'm missing anything here. You have the Internet Bill of Rights, and you also have uh, this idea of moving the capital of the country to Kansas. Yes, sir. So the Kansas thing. Um, and I've talked to a lot of business leaders of, of Fortune 500 companies about this. So this is a, um, just some pie in the sky idea. We need to get our capital out of this city of London carbon copy military jurisdiction we call DC, right? They, mm -hmm. they that'll that'll literally the change everything. That's that's yes. like the, the, sorry to interrupt you, but that's like the uh, that's a foundation. Once you change that, the entire system completely changes at that point. Yep. And, and it says like the constitution is the supreme law of the land. No ands, ifs, or buts about it. No exceptions, no, no sneaky loopholes. It's mm -hmm. that's what it is. Kansas is a, has a bunch of gigantic, uh, or has a huge open land space of cheap flat land. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think nothing would send a more clear message to these corrupt dinosaurs running our country that look, you guys are in charge of fixing this country. You're not in charge of fixing Ukraine. You're not in charge of fixing the Middle East. You're not in charge of fixing Europe. You are in charge of this country right here. Mm -hmm. And that is where you spend like 99% <laughs> of your attention on, right? Mm -hmm. So um, we could build it. Uh, a lot of people are like, wait, what? That's That seems crazy. But um, if you look at Egypt, if you look at Indonesia, there's precedent for this. Uh, mm -hmm. the Egyptians realized... Our current capital is a thousand years old. It's super crowded. It's a gigantic mess. The infrastructure is difficult. Um, so they are building a new capital city out in the middle of the Sahara. And they're making it wow. exactly perfect for what they need. And everything's in one place. And it's just, it's going to work way better. In Indonesia, they realize Jakarta, this entire island is way too crowded. This entire island is sinking into the ocean right now. So we're going to go put it on a different island even. Mm -hmm. um, so there is precedent to this. And, you know, it, it would make it so that this, this is our capital. This is our constitution. We have something that works, right? Right now, you know, the offices are tiny. The, the signals kind of suck because it's all stone. We got all these Illuminati symbols everywhere. Um, it, the air conditioning doesn't work well in the summer. Um, mm -hmm. When they go to present, like when they're presenting an idea or speaking on the floor, they have to print out these posters because they have nothing to present with, right? Like they so can't just, project it. They have no modern amenities to exactly to, to make it an argument. Exactly. So I figure if you go to DC, DC is already a bunch of museums anyways. Why don't we just mm -hmm. add a few more and move our capital to somewhere that it's functional and make a venue that's actually a functional venue for a government? Uh, oh. So that's the first thing. The other thing with the Internet Bill of Rights, this is another huge uh, ace in the hole that we have here. And a lot of people talk about Internet Bill of Rights in the sense of, you know, not allowing censorship, right? Our, our method to dealing with that would be, look, these social media companies are vital services that you can't really run a business, you can't really run a nonprofit, a political campaign. You can't do that without social media. 
right? Mm -hmm. And as you guys saw on the Joy Gilbert campaign, like everything is just stacked against you in that. As we've been seeing in the Twitter files, everything is stacked against you on Twitter, right? So that's yeah. election interference. That's uh, rigging, market rigging, all, all the above. So we're saying the power company, it's a legal principle. The power company cannot shut off your power because they don't like your opinions. It doesn't matter if you are the biggest piece of garbage in the entire world. It doesn't matter if you're from the KKK, if you're from the neo-Nazis, if you're from some of these uh, murderous anarchist groups, doesn't matter how terrible a person you are, they can't shut off your power. Uh, the phone company, they can't shut off your phone because they don't like your opinions. It doesn't matter how terrible a person you are. And that is because they're this thing called public utilities. And mm -hmm. so we made a deal back in the day, like a lot of power companies are the only power company in town. So it's like, hey, in exchange for this uh, essentially monopoly rights that you have here, you have to abide by some rules. And one of those rules is you can't just shut people off because you feel like it, right? So that should be a hard set principle on the internet, just like it's a hard set principle in other arenas. And I think that would help things a lot. Mm -hmm. The next thing of the internet bill of rights, the thing that that is our ace in the hole here, the thing that's gonna allow us to pull off this Andrew Yang-like spring out of the woodworks and uh, get really popular really fast is our idea of, data sovereignty and the great data clawback so everywhere on the internet everywhere you go um they are tracking your data right so every website you go to even if you don't use google facebook or any of these giants google analytics is in every single web page out there right and they mm -hmm. can see every single keystroke you make uh, and they can even see like if you go to type something in on a website and you don't hit enter they could see implied text is what that's called uh, mm -hmm. They could track your locations every single place you go. They have tracking cookies that they could see what your behavior was versus what your buying um, habits are. And so they, they can essentially build these unimaginably complex psychological profiles on each and every one of us individually. And they can know what makes us ha sad, what makes us happy, what makes us motivated to take action one way or another. And they can use that to manipulate the crap out of us or mm -hmm. so sell that to other corporations so that they can manipulate the crap out of us into buying their stuff or doing their thing or pushing their cause or whatever. Um, and it's not just your online behavior. It's not just on your phone and on your computer. Your, um, your phone listens in a lot of cases to your offline conversations and it's this AI in your phone that transcribes it into text and then sends that text in, right? Um, so mm -hmm. they, they'll say, oh, we're not listening. It's like, yeah, that AI thing in my phone is listening and it's sending you the transcript, right? So that's the weasel words they use. Every mm -hmm. single thing that passes through a tier one data center, emails, calls, all that stuff, that's tracked. Uh, when you go to the store, like especially in Arizona now, Walmart has these facial recognition cameras that track you every single place you walk through the store, every single thing you wow. buy. The banks, they take your name off there, they give you a number, and they aggregate the data and sell, give that all to these AI companies and these tech giants. Uh, the hospitals, they take all of your medical data and they give it... Mm -hmm give it over, they sell it. The DNA companies, they take all of your DNA and they sell it to Big Pharma, right? So everyone's getting rich off of our data except us. And mm -hmm. that data right now is worth trillions and trillions of dollars. And moving into the future, it's gonna be exponentially more valuable, tens, potentially even hundreds of trillions of dollars. So what we're saying is that, look, if you wanna cyber stock the shit out of us and make trillions of dollars off our data, then you need to pay us our cut. Right, we own mm -hmm. the data. That data should go to a blockchain that we own. And every time that gets touched, whether that's by a corporation, by an AI, by a federal law enforcement, by whoever, we got to get paid our cut every single time. So this is essentially a path to eventually a thousand fifteen hundred dollars a month for every single person in the United States and potentially the world if they pick it up too. And wow. so we're calling that our universal passive income. It differs from universal basic income in the fact that it's not just a handout from other taxpayers, which wouldn't be fair. Universal passive income is a fair business exchange that allows everybody to uh, earn money off the value that they're generating for these tech titans that are taking over the world, right? And this data, it's becoming more and more valuable. It is the gas that every single uh, AI company needs to use to function, right? These AI, if you want to train your AI, you need a mountain of data to have it learn, right? Mm -hmm. So in exchange for us allowing these uh, robots to take over the world, they, they got to pay us our cut, right? Obviously we mm -hmm. can't really stop that stuff, uh, but we can 
slow it down a little bit and we can make it more expensive and we can make it more fair as they gobble up more and more of every industry, right? We got these mm-hmm. chat bots taking over customer service. We got these uh, factory robots taking over a bunch of manufacturing jobs. In Arizona, we have these self-driving cars everywhere. That I, Right now, I could pull up my phone. I could order a car without a driver, and I could go somewhere in a car without a driver, right? So they're putting a bunch of drivers out of work. So mm-hmm. what are we going to do in a society where in the next decade, there's going to be tens of millions of jobs? How are we going to manage that without just descending into Mad Max land? And how we're going to manage that is with this regime change, with this Internet Bill of Rights, and with this universal passive income that allows everybody to get by based on the value that they're providing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Better than their solution. Their solution seems to be uh, population control, killing us, you know, large amounts of people from uh, what their, you know, actions and their words that are are coming out of certain European capitals. Uh, This is a brilliant idea. Is there anything that we miss in terms of QIntel Pro? Well, um, it's, it's got a bunch of stuff. So we got, um, I, I put in the rabbit hole section. We got the cabal. We got uh, mind control stuff. Uh, we got um, satanic pedophiles, like where we got that from, which was the FBI website. Um, and by the way, I just want to reiterate to the viewer: this is like he, uh, Austin has receipts for all of this stuff, right? Like, it's yeah, not absolutely. Like you're just so these things out there. You're, you're so it's it curations on- of government documents, essentially, mm-hmm. and and test expert testimony from various people who have worked with this stuff um that that's what this is and it's it's meant to be a simple well-documented easy thing that you it's mobile optimized so as we're getting out there and as we're building the support and as we're bringing people like like waking them up to the idea that the worst case scenario is possible um uh, it's you got all the evidence you need right in your hand at all times, right? Mm-hmm. They don't believe that satanic pedophile is a thing. You're like, hey, look, we got that FBI website. Here's the clip of them talking about what it is. Here's the clip of them b- doing tunnels to preschools. The mm-hmm. works. You're trying uh, to demonstrate how horrible it is, hence this kind of call for drastic change. Absolutely. Um, so in the domestic side, we got the stuff about the Federal Reserve and we call them the banksters, right? Just this financial tyranny that's captured our money system. And that has been uh, enslaving us and devaluing our money for a long time. Mm -hmm. We have, uh, I call it Bush League politics. And uh, I should change it to gangster mafia politics because it's essentially just showing how, based on their emails, uh, the Democrats, and in some cases, Republicans, they do a bunch of shady stuff. They hire people to go steal yard signs. They hire people to go vandalize. Like, Like during the election in 2016, they went and mm-hmm. hired a bunch of gangsters to vandalize vehicles that had Trump wow. stickers on them to, quote, create a psychological climate unfavorable to such displays. Wow. Uh, we show how they rigged the polls, right? We had all their, their information in there. We show them, uh, like, Jake Tapper and other liberal journalists that would never say this in public, emailing them behind the scenes and saying, like, why are you trying to intimidate us out of talking things that you don't like? Uh, we have them putting fake Craigslist ads. Like, so they would they would make ads that were supposedly from the Trump organization, and they would write a bunch of offensive things in there. This is approved mm-hmm. by the head of communications for the Democratic Party. So it's not just wow. like some low level people doing this. Wow. And they would astroturf a bunch of offensive things that Trump supposedly did. Uh, we have them talking about wet works, mm-hmm. right? Wet works, the euphemism for killing people. Um, Mm -hmm. So again, it's straight from the camel's mouth, all there in a nice, easy to read format. So that was the Bush League politics section. We talk about the criminal injustice system. Talk about how the United States, out of all the world's prisoners, all the prisoners in the world, a quarter of them are in the United States. And we don't have anywhere close to the quarter of the population. We talk about how your constitutional right, they they don't exist, right? Uh, 67% of the people in jail right now are unconvicted so i i caused i provoked a lot of people on my side on the republican side at least during the campaign um when john fetterman said that i think half the people should get out of jail i said i agree with that and they were like what 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 are you talking about and it's like 67 percent of the people in jail right now are not convicted right and we're supposed supposed to be innocent Mm. until proven guilty right and so they're like, oh, wait, yeah. So, you know, obviously some people, and this this is the big game here where um, 
they will let all these people that, you know, you've robbed like 20 people, you've raped like 20 people, you know, you have this like rap sheet, you know, a hundred pages yeah. long and they're just going to let you out on the street. And then they're going to make everybody think, Oh, we have to crack down more on, we have to be more draconian. We have to do this. Uh, and that's what I explained to some of these lefties I talked to is like, dude, George Soros, his aim is not getting people out of prison. His aim is manufacturing the consent to have a massive wave of people going back to prison because he makes a lot of money in the bond markets off of the bonds created when those people go to prison, right? So he pretends Whoa. to be your friend, but he's actually doing exactly the opposite. And it's not that hard, right? It's not that hard to say, like, I went to prison over a YouTube video, right? And I had all my rights violated. It's not that hard to say, okay, this person that's never had a criminal record, that didn't do anything violent, that made a YouTube video, that we're doing this ticky tacky stuff on, that's not a threat. Versus this person that raped, you know, 10 women, robbed six people, right? It should not be that difficult to say who's a threat and who's not, especially yeah, with yeah. some of the high profile examples we've been seeing lately is people that clearly, clearly are off their rocker and clearly just commit violent crimes nonstop, they get let out. And mm -hmm. then that kind of poisons the well and makes the rest of us, the rest of us limited government minded sort of folks think like, oh, we should just lock everyone up. It's like, no, dude. We should call balls and strikes, and we should have constitutional rights. Uh, one of the very important updates that we need to make to our constitution is we need to specify explicitly innocent until proven guilty. A lot mm -hmm. of people don't know because they teach us this in school as if that is in the constitution. That's not – nowhere in the constitution does it say innocent until proven guilty. Absolutely yeah. nowhere. And they act accordingly, right? Um, stuff like your right to a speedy trial. You're supposed to have 70 days from the time they indict you to the mm. time you get a trial if you don't waive that right. And for my case and for all kinds of other people's cases, they just drag that out for years on end. So you yeah. end up sitting there for years and years in prison and they just say, oh, we could get unlimited delays and we'll just keep you in here forever unless you take our BS plea. Yeah. Right? That I know is somebody crazy. in jail right now, actually, that's been it's, by the time he's going to even see trial, it's going to be a year and a half in jail. Yeah, that is that is insanity. And according to our constitution, that's not supposed to be a thing. That is a bedrock, like one of the most fundamental constitutional rights that you have. So we need to take that and say, okay, bet, right to a speedy trial. And if they do not give you right to a speedy trial, you get out, period, yeah. right? Case yeah. is dropped. There has to be some kind of penalties for these officials who just violate this stuff nonstop right exactly our, right. our constitutional rights have to actually mean something because if mm -hmm. they don't then we don't actually live in the united states like we think we do this is not america yeah. if the constitution isn't isn't existing our constitutional rights aren't existing then we don't live actually in america like we think we do and we mm -hmm. we want to get back to that um so that's criminal justice we talk about the the dc thing right i put the i made that graphic where i have the dc out in the water and then how it's franchising its its jurisdiction out to the circuit courts in the individual states mm -hmm. um so we just talk about the giant racket the criminal justice system is how it's the opposite of justice in almost every case um we talk about how the elections are rigged obviously and have been rigged for a long time and uh we we show in a lot of cases um we, like clips from msnbc of them you know back when it was okay for liberals to question elections we show wikileaks of how google's openly interfering in the elections we have a link on there um a lot of you guys remember the city powell made this accusation against these voting machine companies saying mm. that oh they're owned by this web of shell companies out of barbados and the netherlands and uh it ultimately in venezuela all of those allegations that she got sued for, those were out of a CIA briefing sent class classified to the embassies in Central America in as far back as 2006. So our government has known since wow. 2006, those voting machine companies are BS to the so, max. So what she was saying was legitimate? What she, what she was essentially saying is directly, she didn't know it at the time, right? And mm -hmm. I was trying to send it to her like, hey, you'll, you, won't, you can't get sued if you're just reading it off WikiLeaks, right? But on my site, I have that thing showing, look at it, look at how sketchy these voting machine companies are, right? This is a mm -hmm. CIA assessment of these voting machine companies set classified to the thing. So I try to provide the sauce here for some of the concerns that we raised, the various concerns that we raised. I try to explain what happened with that Trump election in 2016, that they keep doing this Russia racket because a lot of mm -hmm. people are still really hopped up on that. And I think we should spend a little bit more time 
explaining to some of our hysterical liberal friends that this was all BS and you guys can take a breath now.